Hello everyone and welcome back to our class in Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning in Finance. We are now at chapter 3.3 in which we want to discuss multiple linear regression. We've seen in the previous videos simple linear reg regression in which we use a simple line uh, to predict um, response variable based on one predictor. Now, as you can imagine, multiple linear regression is simply the extension of simple linear regression by including more than one um, predictor variable. So um, simple linear regression is useful, uh, so is multiple linear regression, but actually in practice we all the time have more than one predictor. So in machine learning, actually, we might end up with using thousands of different variables, thousands of predictors. And uh, the question now is, what can we do? Um, two possible approaches come to our mind. The first one is simply estimate several simple regressions. For example, if you have 10 predictors, estimate 10 simple linear regressions. The problem is that if you have correlations between those predictors, and this will almost always be the case, um, these correlations will bias the results in the sense that the coefficients on um, one co um, on one predictor variable will be up um, biased upward or downward. So we have an over or underestimation of the effect of one single predictor because this might simply be due to um, correlation with a different predictor. The second alternative is much better. It's estimating a multivariate or multiple linear regression. That is, we include more than one predictor variable. So we have our response, um, which in this case is a metric response, y, and we want to predict y on the basis of several predictors, x1, x2, x3, and so on, until xp. So we have p variables, thus we have p plus 1 parameters, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, up until beta p for the predictors, and beta 0 for the intercept. We say that y is regressed on the set of predictors x1, x2, and so on, and those p plus 1 unknown parameters or unknown coefficients, with the beta 0 being the intercept and beta i being the slopes for the different parameters, uh, the different predictors, sorry, um, they are estimated again by minimizing the residual sum of squares. So we again use OLS, the ordinary least squares method, to estimate those coefficients. And if you've already taken a statistics class, you will probably know that the vector of coefficients, beta hat, is given by x transpose times x. These are the um, matrices of uh, those observations uh, for x1 until xp. So you take the variable of x observations, x, uh, transpose it, multiply it with x itself, take the inverse and then multiply it again with the transpose of x times y, and you get those um, OLS coefficients in matrix notation. The result, if you write out the vector of coefficients, then is um, that you can predict y using those coefficient estimates beta 0 hat plus beta 1 hat, etc., and your observations x1 until xp in equation 50. Now, in um, the multivariate case, in multiple linear regression, we no longer have a line in the um, two-dimensional case, uh, where we have two, or actually three-dimensional case where we have two predictors and one response variable, um, we get uh, a plane, as you can see here. Again, uh, we estimate this plane, which uh, is shown here in blue and green colors. And you see those observations we have uh, being the red dots, and the black lines show the estimation errors. Um, so we minimize, we are choosing the plane such that the squared, uh, the sum of squared errors is minimal. This is the three-dimensional case where we have two predictors. If we have more predictors, we get uh, a linear hyperplane. 
Let's have a look at this um, in R. Um, we estimate the regression coefficients um, and we are using the uh, car seats uh, data set from the ISL R package, um, which is the companion package in R for the statistical learning uh, textbook. And what we are trying to do here is we want to predict product sales based on advertising budget, community income level, average age and average education in those uh, communities. And the way we do this is, first of all, we have to um, load the library mass for regressions. We have to load ISLR, which includes the data. Um, and then um, we use the LM function, which is uh, the linear model in R. So this is just the very short command for a linear regression analysis in R. And as you can see from the command, the syntax is as follows. Sales is explained and predicted by using advertising plus income plus age plus education. We are using the car seats data. We are trying to fit, or we're not trying, but we're actually fitting a linear model. And this is um, now written into our new variable lm.fit also have called it results or results.fit. Um, so LM fit here is the object um, that includes the fitted linear model object. By using the summary command on LM.fit, we can see what the result is. Um, so the function call was formula sales is explained by using advertising income age education and using car seats data. Uh, the residuals are um, shown here. So we can see that uh, this is the median, the first quartile, the third quartile, and the minima and the maximum uh, residuals after having fitted the model. Um, and these are the coefficient estimates. Uh, you see the intercept advertising. This is actually, so this is beta zero. This is beta one. And two, three, and four. You can see the estimates for the coefficients. There are standard errors, t values, and here you can see which of these coefficients are significantly different from zero. Now, uh, be a little bit careful. Actually, R has this feature that um, in well, in research papers we usually write three stars for significance at the one percent level. Two, uh, two stars for 5% and one star for 10% level. Actually, this is different in R. Um, as you can see here, uh, three stars actually means significant at 0.1%. So two stars is 1%, one star is 5%. So um, actually, in a research paper, you would probably have to add yet another star, for example, in this case. So we can see advertising is highly statistically significant as is income and as is age. Education is not significantly different from zero, so it seems that our predictor education has no power to explain the car sales in this data sample. You can see um, we've used, um, actually, it's on the next page, I think, uh, the number of observations. You can see the multiple R squared is close to 15%. We have um, an adjusted R squared of 14%. I'll talk about this later. And we get an F statistics and a p-value for the whole model. So where should we go next? Um, we should check is at least one of the predictors useful in predicting the response. Well, uh, you've already seen as it is from the output from R. It seems three out of four predictors are significantly different from the zero. So they are powerful to explain our response. So we can use the F statistic for the question, is at least one of the predictors useful in predicting the response? So is the model itself useful? Then we have to decide on do we need all or only a subset of the predictors? And we get to the question of variable selection. And then how well does the model fit the data? We have to again look at the RSE and the R squared. And last but not least, given a set of predictor values, what response value should we predict and how accurate is our prediction? So we are back um, to forecasting, which would mean that, for example, if you have a line, where's my cursor here, if, for example, 
in the one dimensional case, we have these observations and with estimated regression line. For example, you would know that if this is the estimated regression line and we get a new x value, which is here, for example, here, and we know, okay, then this would be the predicted and forecasted value. Or if we have an, if we forecast this, well, probably here, because this is the extension of the linear line. Now, let's talk about this first question. Is at least one predictor useful? We are using the F statistics. So we're testing the null hypothesis that all those slopes are all zero. Not even one is uh, not equal to zero. So the um, null hypothesis is beta 1 equals beta 2 and so on equals beta p and equals zero. We're testing this hypothesis using um, this following F statistics. Again, uh, we are um, going back to the total sum of squares and the residual sum of squares, and we are simply using the previous F statistic uh, from the simple linear regression case and now applied in the multivariate case. And if there is no relationship between the response and the predictors, the F statistic should be close to 1. And if the um, um, hypothesis HA is true, then F should be greater than 1, so it should increase. That's the F statistics we've already seen here, and as you can see, it is rather far away from 1, and the F statistics is also uh, converted into a p-value, and it seems that uh, the null hypothesis um, is actually rejected. Okay. Now, which predictors are significant? Um, we've already seen in the R output that um, let's assume that all the predictors, or not all predictors, have an insignificant coefficient, um, but which predictors are significant? Again, as in the simple linear regression case, um, um, we estimate t-statistics and p-values, so we calculate t-statistics for each predictor and the square of each t statistics is also the corresponding f statistic. And based on those t statistics that are also given here in this column, yeah, sorry, here, we can then also convert those t values into p statistics and p values. And you can see that three out of the four predictors are significant in our regression. Um, However, and this is one difference uh, to the linear regression models you've probably seen uh, in econometrics, um, in the case of machine learning, and in the case you have big data um, you want to analyze, it might be that the number of variables is larger than the number of observations, or extremely larger. So you have thousands of uh, predictors, and only, let's say, one or 2,000 observations. So there are more coefficients beta j to estimate than observations from which to estimate them. Very simple example, 100 variables and only 50 observations. And we have two, um, two uh, results that come out of this. First of all, we cannot fit regression using multiple OLS. So what I've shown you before, the linear model um, in matrix notation, where you're using um, the OLS estimator, OLS can no longer be used in the case with more variables than observations. And we cannot use the F statistics. So this needs you need to keep this in mind uh, when you have an application where the number of predictors is larger or much larger than the number of observations. OK. so. We have checked uh, whether uh, at least one predictor is significant. We can use t-statistics and p-values based on these t-statistics to check which predictors are significant. And in the next video, uh, we're going to um, decide on the question which predictors we should choose.